Hey guys, this is Kremny Gliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is what's inside of a thermostatic expansion valve and also how do they work. So these are also known as a TEV or TXV, and the job of the TXV is to control the superheat across an evaporator coil. So I'm going to take you to an evaporator coil and show you the thermostatic expansion valve mounted there, and I'm going to show you the measurement points that the TXV is taking on the evaporator coil to show how it works. And then that's gonna give us a better understanding of these pathways, and we're gonna take up close views of these thermostatic expansion valves in order to understand. Here we see a thermostatic expansion valve mounted to the inlet of the evaporator coil. So what you have is high pressure liquid entering into the TXV, and then you have low pressure liquid exiting the TXV. Now, what this is doing is it's limiting the amount of refrigerant down. It's meant to be a pressure reduction device, so it's allowing the expansion of the refrigerant to occur because as you have low pressure liquid exiting the thermostatic expansion valve, it's coming into the coil as a 80% liquid, 20% flash gas, so the refrigerant's saturated and the refrigerant can absorb the heat from the air crossing over the coil. And that's what lowers the air temperature that is crossing the, the coil right here. Now, as the refrigerant travels through this coil, it's absorbing more and more and more heat until it comes out of the saturated state and is in the completely vapor state. Then the refrigerant is going to absorb more heat and it's going to increase in temperature until it comes out on this, this suction line right here. So the thermostatic expansion valve is monitoring what's called the superheat, which is the, the rise in the, the vapor temperature at the evaporator coil. So it's monitoring the superheat by measuring the temperature on the suction line right here and also the pressure right here. So those are two forces on the thermostatic expansion valve and the third is the spring pressure. So this, while the system is running, this bulb right here has refrigerant in it all the time over to this diaphragm. So it's connected via this capillary tube. And there's a diaphragm right in here in the TXV that separates this charge from the charge flowing through the TXV. So a thermostatic expansion bulb has its own refrigerant charge. And so it's just touching the suction line. So the refrigerant traveling through the suction line is just continuing to go and the bulb is sensing that temperature and the refrigerant inside of the bulb is absorbing the heat from this line and it's increasing in pressure. Remember, anytime that temperature increases, pressure increases. So when the, the pressure inside of this bulb increases, it's going to apply pressure to the head of the TXV. That's the opening force. Now, one of the two closing forces is the, the internal equalizer or the external equalizer. So because this system has distributor tubes, it has an external equalizer or external equalization line, and you can see it's right over here. So we have a tap on the suction line, and we're measuring our pressure right there. So our pressure is going to be applied this way to try to close the TXV, and we also have a spring in here, and that's gonna also help try to close the TXV. However, while the system is running, the, the pressure at the bulb is going to be higher than the suction pressure here, and the bulb pressure is gonna press in on the spring, and the spring is gonna compress and apply pressure back, and that's gonna hold the pin in place. So that's gonna allow the refrigerant to come through, but only a small amount. So it's trying to maintain about 10 to 14 degrees of superheat across this evaporator coil. If you want to learn more about superheat and subcooling, you can check out a video I have linked down in the description section below. It's how to explain superheat and subcooling to your apprentice. Now that we covered that, let's get back to the cut open thermostatic expansion valves so that we can see the inside of them. Here we have a balanced port TXV, and I'll get into what the, the meaning of balanced port is in just a little bit, but you have this pin that's mounted right here, and then you have the bottom section right here. This is just resting right there, and then you have your spring pressing up on that brass piece. On the bottom of this, it's welded so you can't tighten this spring pressure anymore. Now how this works is you have high pressure, high temperature liquid entering right here, and then it comes through this small passageway, lowers in pressure, and then right here is where you have your low pressure, low temperature liquid exiting the thermostatic expansion valve. Now how that occurs is you see there's this diaphragm right here, and you have pressure from the bulb pressing downwards. You have your external equalization line right here pressing upwards, and you also have your spring pressure pressing upwards. 
So I want to show you the movement in this because it's really not much at all. So you see that? That's it. There's really not much movement in that diaphragm. And that's just to be able to open and close this pathway off. Now, balance port means that the, the pressure coming in, that's higher than this low pressure that's down here. So a balance port, the whole point of that is it's the exerting force upwards and downwards as it comes in. So this angle right here and then this angle right here in surface area is meant to cancel each other out so that this pressure, that's this high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant entering does not mess up the, the thermostatic expansion valve's ability to control the superheat. So you just have the three pressures that are applied on the TXV, which is the bulb pressure downwards, and then you have the external equalization line, and that pressure is exerted upwards, and then you have your spring pressure exerted upwards. Just to show you what this looks like, you see that's, that's all it is. It's just a little brass piece, and that's meant to push up against this to flex it. So you also have this seal that's in here too, and that's what you need to be aware of. You don't want to melt that while you're brazing a thermostatic expansion valve in. Here's another thermostatic expansion valve, and this one's easier to see the external equalization line. You can see I'm just going to put this little piece of copper down in there, and you see that it's only going that far. So that's it. That external equalization line is acting independent of the pathways here. So if you can see that the pressure is, is coming out of that hole and you see that we have a TXV bulb head right here that gets threaded on this threaded connection right here, you see that the external equalization pressure is pushing upwards on the diaphragm of the TXV. Then you have the, the pin right here is getting sealed so you don't have any refrigerant traveling across or around this pin and this pin is getting pushed upwards up against that diaphragm right on the inside of that TXV. So that's how that works. And on the inside, it's the same, same method basically. You have your high pressure liquid coming in and then it can come around this single pin and then come out right here. And then you have your spring on the bottom of this one. Next, I wanna show you this thermostatic expansion valve that has an adjustable stem and so it can adjust the spring pressure on the bottom of the thermostatic expansion valve. So you can see that's where the pin is on the inside. Here you have the bottom of the TXV and you just take this cap off and you see you have your adjustment right here. Now this part of the, uh, the nut right here that seals the bottom of the thermostatic expansion valve, it does not move, it's mounted to the bottom. But you have this adjustment on the inside and you can see that you have this little shelf here and the spring sitting on top of it. So as you turn this, what's happening is you're turning this right here and it's screwing up on the inside of the thermostatic expansion valve and it's applying more pressure at the spring. And that's how, that's how that assembly works. This is not moving as you turn, as you turn. It's just this section right here and it climbs up or down the threads on the inside of the TXV to apply more or less pressure for the spring. Next, I wanted to explain the bulb, and right here you see you have a copper bulb with a copper capillary tube attached to a steel head, and the, the steel head is painted to try to avoid the rust, and this is a common problem with older thermostatic expansion valves that were made with a steel head. They end up rusting, and then you end up leaking the bulb charge out of the TXV. So that's a common issue with older TXVs, and a lot of times now we have the stainless steel head, and we have a stainless steel capillary line, and it's... Uh, less likely for this to, to kink or close or uh, break right here at the head of the TXV. And we also have a stainless steel bulb. This one right here is an absorption bulb. And you have this absorption material taking up the majority of the room inside the bulb, which lowers the amount of refrigerant needed within the bulb. And it actually helps to reduce fluctuations for, for like a, a problem like hunting within a TXV. Here we have a TXV with a two rod setup and this rod came out of that hole at the top. Then you have another hole at the bottom and there's a, the rod is actually still in there. So that's your two rods that push up and down on, the, uh, on this right here. So it's gonna be pushing up and down on the face right here. You can actually see some scratches right there and right there. And this cone is gonna be coming up. It's actually the pin. It's gonna be 
coming up and closing off that hole unless the, the diaphragm at the top is exerting enough pressure downwards to push this needle down in, for, in order for the refrigerant to come through. But anyway, you have your top rod, your bottom rod in the center. That's where you have your, your high pressure liquid going into low pressure liquid and exiting the TXV. And then over on the side right there, you see that there's a bleed port. So this TXV was likely used on a reciprocating compressor that needed to equalize after the system shut off. And this is not a balanced port TXV, so this TXV is going to have a harder time controlling the superheat depending on how high the pressure is for the high pressure liquid entering the TXV. The last thing I wanted to show you was that these thermostatic expansion valves have to have a bypass feature if they're installed on a heat pump. So remember that if this is installed at the inlet of the indoor coil, during air conditioning mode, the refrigerant is going to be flowing this way and it's going to be coming out here and that coil will be the evaporator. But in heating mode, that coil, that indoor coil is going to be the condenser coil and the refrigerant is going to be flowing this way. And it needs to bypass through this without any pressure reduction in here. So this one has a, a check valve, which is a bypass feature, and that can you can access it externally. Now you don't want to take this off because refrigerant will be coming out, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. A lot of other thermostatic expansion valves have it internally and you can't get to it. Also, just keep in mind that you see all this staining is just occurring from the condensation on the tin, and that tin is resting on the, on the brass. That's not from the valve itself. But anyway, I'm going to be getting in a little deeper on the uh, external and internal bypass features of metering devices on our next video. So go ahead and check that out. Make sure to check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. I made sure that we had a large font size. We've got pictures in order to determine uh, what the problems are. We have different scenarios, the preparing a system for refrigerant with a vacuum and the recovery procedures, all that type of stuff is in this book right here. We also have a workbook for our book and this contains 1,000 questions that I specifically want you to know so that you're an effective technician out there in the field. And we're also providing our answer key. And so we have the color images right here, as well as all of our A, B, C, D, true and false questions. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of application questions and preparation of a system for refrigerant, checking the charge, troubleshooting, and also airflow. So we have that available as well. So check this stuff out over at Amazon or over at our website at acservicetech.com. At our website, we have a full outline of everything that's contained in this book. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.